Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 25, we'll take a look at architectural abstraction. When I talk about architectural abstraction, basically what we're doing architecturally is controlling change. We're, we're basically decoupling our systems, applications, or services. For example, as you can see here, everything we have in all these services is written in Java, but watch this. When I change that right-hand service and rewrite that to C-sharp using REST, what changes? And the answer is nothing. And so this forms this architectural abstraction. Now what I want to do here is show you five levels of abstraction and in four different ways or protocols of communicating between services, applications, or systems, and we'll analyze the levels of abstraction for each of these. This also, by the way, helps you to determine which kind of protocol is best suited for you. And so let's say we have a service right here. I want to show you five levels of abstraction. The first level right here, or I should say types of abstraction. Uh, I, I call them levels because I do have these from easiest to hardest. And so I guess we can call those levels of abstraction. Uh, the first is location transparency. And this just basically says, do I need to know where you are located if I'm going to invoke this particular service? The second is name transparency. When I am invoking you for certain operations, like the, this pricing service right here, do I need to know that your name is pricing service? And that's name transparency. Uh, the third level is implementation transparency. When I'm invoking this service, do I need to know the platform or language that you are written in? And so that's, that's implementation. Now these three are pretty basic levels of abstraction, but the next two get a little bit harder. Uh, the next one is access decoupling. And so in other words, this form of abstraction says, do I need to know the protocol that you are using to accept requests? So in other words, look at this example we have here. I've got a pricing service located at 172.56.33.98 in Java. Um, using RabbitMQ with AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. Do I have to use AMQP to get to this pricing service? And that's what access decoupling really says. And finally, the hardest level of abstraction is contract decoupling. And so here I have a pricing service right here written in Java, and it takes in a product ID and quantity. Can I pass in something different? Can I pass in just the product ID? Can I pass in a SKU? Um, maybe it's a different kind of, of identifier for a particular product. Can I do that or do I have to adhere to this? And that's what contract decoupling really is in a form of abstraction. Let's take a look at four different kinds of protocols, or I should say um, ways of communicating between systems or services, and let's analyze the levels of abstraction provided with each of these. And the first that I want to look at is messaging. <clears throat> we take a look at messaging. Service A is sending a message to a queue. Service B picks that message up, does something with it, returns the message through another reply queue, and service A then receives it. Okay, when we analyze this, do I have location transparency? Now what we're doing here is this. Service A is invoking service B for a particular operation. In this case, it's a pricing service. I want to see the price. Do I know where service B is located? Of course I don't. I need to know where the queue is, by the way. I do have an IP address to get to the queue, but not to the service. That's a form of abstraction. How about name transparency? Do I know the name of this pricing service? And the answer is no. I need to know the name of the queue, but not the service itself. And so I do have name transparency to that particular service. How about implementation transparency? Do I know, if I'm service A, do I know what service B is implemented in? And the answer is no, I don't. It could be any kind of language or platform because I'm simply talking to the queue. How about access decoupling? Do I happen to know or need to know what service B's protocol is? 
And then unfortunately here I do. It happens to be messaging. And if I'm using ActiveMQ, then I have to use ActiveMQ. If I'm using AMQP, I have to use AMQP. And so whatever service B is listening on, I have to adhere to. So I don't have access decoupling because this is simple messaging. Finally, contract decoupling. Can I pass service B different information? And the answer is no, I have to adhere to the contract because with basic messaging, there's no component or no capability within basic messaging to transform that, that contract. And so in this particular case, I've got the first three fairly easily, but not the last two. Let's take a look at an adapter. Now an adapter happens to be a piece of code that sits between service A and service B. So when service A wants to call service B, I'm actually going through some sort of adapter, which is usually a piece of code, that then in turn forwards that request to service B. Um, in microservices, for example, this might be a good example like of, of a service mesh. Um, this might be uh, another example is a hexagonal architecture, uh, ports and adapters, uh, where I'm talking to an intermediary. And in this particular case, let's talk about location transparency. Do I know where service B is located? Nope, I know where the adapter is, but I don't know where service B is. How about the name? Do I know what the name is of service B? And in this case, I do not. And so in that case, I do have name transparency. I may or may not know the name of the adapter, depending on the protocol there, but it doesn't matter because I'm accessing the adapter, not the particular service. How about implementation transparency? Do I know what service B is implemented in? In this particular case, I do not. And so the use of an adapter gives us these, these first three. But what about access decoupling? Now this is an interesting one right here, because if you think about it, I'm not even showing any protocols. And so in this particular point, maybe I get to the adapter through REST, and the adapter uses maybe ATMI or uh, could be REST or it could be SOAP to get to that service. And so yes, in fact, in this case, I do have access decoupling because that adapter can actually do a protocol transformation from whatever protocol I'm talking to the adapter on to get to that particular service. And finally, contract decoupling. Do I have this? In this particular case, I in fact do. And the reason I do is because I can pass in just the product ID. The adapter can supplement that information to say, well, wait a minute, you need the quantity. I'm gonna default it to one just to get the price. You see, the pricing service may do different pricings based on some volume discounts. But if I don't pass a quantity in, I'm not looking for a volume discount. And so in this case, I do have contract decoupling. Uh, because that adapter has code that can actually supplement or change part of that contract. And so with adapters, I do have all five. Let's take a look at RESTful. When well, we took a look at RESTful calls right here, let's first of all, so component A is talking to component B with REST. Here's a good quiz for you. Do I have location transparency? Do I need to know the address of service B? And this gets tricky. Generally, if I'm doing point to point, I do not have location transparency because I need to know an IP address. However, through the use of an API layer or a reverse proxy or even DNS, I can have location transparency. So this one can waver either way, depending if I'm doing point to point or going through some sort of other quote, adapter. <laughs> so, so this one's not quite as clear. But how about name transparency? Do I need to know the name of service B? And the answer is no, I don't. You know, here's a good litmus test for name transparency. So I've got that here because I know that generally within REST and in most implementations, I provide an annotation on top of a method and that turns that method call into a resource that I can actually then use in REST. Here's the trick. Can I change and refactor the name of that method? And the answer is yes, I can. So I don't need to know the name of the service or the method I'm invoking. So in fact, I do have name transparency. How about implementation transparency? In this case, uh, most of you who use REST say, well, of course. <laughs> and so, so any platform or language that can communicate with REST I can communicate with. So yes, I do not know what service B is implemented in. How about access decoupling? Like messaging, 
No, if service B uses REST, I have to communicate with REST. And so I do not have access decoupling. And finally, contract decoupling. Do I have to pass that product ID and quantity in? And the answer is yes, because there's no intermediary code that can do any sort of message enhancement or message transformation. And so, in fact, uh, I have very similar to messaging with the question mark on location transparency, depending how it's implemented. So not quite the same level of abstraction as messaging, but pretty close. Finally, let's take a, the use, uh, let's take a look at the use of a message bus. And this would be like uh, things like an ESB or an integration hub, Spring integration, Camel, Mule, uh, these sort of, of things. And when we look at this, um, I am communicating with a message bus, let's say Mule, um, and uh, service B is then it's forwarding onto service B. Do I know where service B is? Oh, of course not, because I may be communicating with the bus through messaging, and then messaging sends a RESTful call to service B. Perfect. All right, so I don't know where it's located. How about name transparency? Do I need to know the name of service B? And in this case, it is highly abstracted. I have no idea. I'm talking to a message bus. I have no idea where service B is or what it is, and so I do have that. How about implementation? Same thing. I do, in fact, have implementation transparency because I have no idea what B is implemented in, where it is, or what its name is. Now, how about access decoupling? And in here, notice, like uh, the adapter, I am not even specifying a protocol here. So service A can communicate with the message bus with SOAP, and then the message bus can communicate with service B through, let's say, RMI or, let's say, something like uh, REST. And so, yes, I do have access decoupling. And finally, contract decoupling. Can I pass in just the product ID or even a SKU and still invoke service B? And like the adapter, I absolutely can. And so, because the, the, the message bus has actual code that can, again, supplement or conform to that contract for me. And so you can kind of see this is important architecturally when we're trying to understand, do I need access or contract decoupling? Do I need implementation transparency? And this helps guide uh, which type of protocol we actually need. And so this has been Lesson 25, Architectural Abstraction. Uh, again, my name is Mark Richards, and this is Software Architecture Monday. Please stay tuned next Monday for another free lesson in architecture. Thank you very much.